This is a photo of Buzz Aldrin found during a Google Images search. This is a photo. A photo of a painting. A painting of Buzz Aldrin. A painting which I created. But wait. I lied. It is not really a painting, but simply a photo manipulation. That means that all I had to do to create the image was to click on the mouse, and, presto, the pseudo painting was created. It really is that simple. And here are some different kinds of fake art that I could also have created just as easily. Those are just a few examples of what these photo to art programs can do. Or you could make your own painting or drawing effects using normal photo editing programs. These programs are fun to use, but are no substitute for learning the skills needed to become a real artist. The photo manipulations they produce can often fool the casual observer into believing that they are the work of real artists. But close inspection will always uncover the telltale signs that they are not. But, sadly, that doesn't stop some people from trying to pass these photo manipulations off as real paintings. In doing so, they are cheating not only the general public, who often pay money for these fake works of art, but also the skilled and hard-working real artists struggling to earn a living in a market that is becoming increasingly swamped with fakes. So when I was recently contacted by an acquaintance asking for my opinion of a picture in a YouTube video, which was claimed to be an original painting, but suspected of being nothing more than a photo manipulation, I was only too willing to do so. I should point out, that as far as I know, the person claiming the picture to be a real original painting, is not attempting to sell it. And I have no evidence that she is defrauding people of their money with this or any other piece of fake art. Nevertheless, I believe that this person, who goes by the YouTube name of Dr. Lois Ross, has made false claims about her photo manipulation which need exposing. This is Jarrell White, a well-known researcher of the Apollo moon missions. Mr. White believes that these missions were faked. This, and in particular, his many YouTube videos on this subject, has made him many enemies among those on the opposite side of this moon hoax debate. Jarrell White was the subject chosen by Dr. Lois Ross for a claimed painting she created for a YouTube video of her own. And this was the photo of him that she began the video with. She then suddenly presented this very different picture of Jarrell White, and claimed that it was an original painting created by her. As she made no mention of this supposed painting having been based on any other photograph, one might have believed that it was not based on any particular photo or video image of Jarrell White, but was partly or wholly from her own imagination. Whether that was a deliberate attempt at creating that false impression is something that only she can know for certain. But false it was, because some months after her video appeared on YouTube, Jarrah White himself revealed the actual video of his that he believed was used to take a still frame from, and to then manipulate that still frame. Dr. Lois Ross responded to this by stating that this was untrue, and that she had created her picture in the traditional manner firstly by roughly sketching the image on her sketch pad, and later drawing the base image. And it is this claim, that the base image of this picture was drawn by her, in the traditional manner, 
that I will now show to be false. In addition, I will show that with the exception of the eyes, which were separately made bluer and brighter, Dr. Lois Ross's so-called painting was created in the same manner as I created those fake works of art of Buzz Aldrin and others at the beginning of this video. So let's begin by looking at the two images side by side. The first thing we notice is that the face in Lois Ross's picture appears somewhat fatter than on the original still frame. There are a number of possible reasons for this, one of which is that the software she used created a distortion to give it a painted look. This is quite common, as you can see from some of those fakes of mine at the beginning of this video. However, I believe that in this case, the most likely cause is that the width and height proportions were altered by the conversion to a different video resolution to that of the original, and so was not deliberate. So to restore the original proportions, all that is necessary is to adjust the overall picture to the same width and height as the original video. This does not alter any specific areas of the image in relation to any other area, but simply restores Lois Ross's image to the size it was originally. When I presented Lois Ross with my observations about her supposed painting, and asked her to upload the image she claimed to have scanned, she refused to do so. Later, she suggested that what would prove that her image was a real painting were the signs of a canvas. But as I pointed out to her, most photo-to-art programs include canvas simulation effects, as you can clearly see from some of my own fake paintings. Additionally, a fake painting can easily be printed onto a real canvas, so such signs prove nothing. Lois Ross then removed my reply from the comments, along with numerous others I had posted. So Lois Ross then further suggested that if I was basing my skepticism on the fact that the eyes, nose and mouth on her image were too perfectly aligned with those on the original still frame, that could be because she had a very steady hand like Michelangelo. So let's see if the eyes, nose and mouth do indeed perfectly align. They certainly do. And the only way even Michelangelo could have achieved such perfect alignment as that, would have been by tracing over the original still frame. But it isn't only the eyes, nose and mouth that perfectly align. It is everything. Every dot, every mark, every shadow. There is nothing missing and nothing added. And what conclusively proves that Lois Ross's so-called painting as a photo manipulation, is the fact that it has even copied blemishes from the original. Not blemishes on the skin, but faults in the video frame itself. For example, Look at this blotchy area on the right side of the face. Notice the unusual way it is formed. That is a blemish caused by video compression. What we see there are what are known as video compression artifacts. And these very same compression artifacts also appear on Jara White's original video, which proves that they were created before Lois Ross created her image. By enhancing the detail on the original still frame, we can clearly see that these compression artifacts and many others elsewhere, have been directly transferred on to Lois Ross's image. As we can see, the only parts of the two images where there is any difference in detail, are the blue eyes, which Lois Ross did alter by hand. But everything else was directly transferred from the original still frame, even including video compression artifacts. What real artist would choose to include video compression artifacts when painting from a still image? What would be the point? and Lois Ross would not even have been capable of seeing those tiny artifacts without either using a microscope or a massively digitally magnified image. Only a computer program could have done that. And there is another piece of conclusive and damning evidence that Lois Ross certainly does not possess the steady hand she referred to, when likening herself to Michelangelo, that would have been necessary to achieve anything like such perfect alignment, even if tracing this image, let alone drawing it. The image was cropped from its original background. And just look at the cropping. I have never seen such untidy cropping. Look at the top left of the head, where that long yellow line from the background has been left in the picture. And look at all the other examples of untidy cropping where the arrows are pointing. Is that the work of a talented artist claiming to have a steady hand like that of Michelangelo? Even using the old lasso tool method. Cropping a face and head from its background is a simple enough task for even an average artist, let alone one claiming to have a steady hand like Michelangelo. 
yet Lois Ross has conclusively demonstrated with that extremely poor and shoddy cropping that she is no such steady hand. That cropping tells us that Lois Ross would not be capable of even tracing that face as accurately as her picture suggests, let alone drawing it. No artist would have deliberately reproduced those video compression artifacts, and very few, if any, would even have been capable of doing so with such precision. And as Lois Ross has proved with her untidy cropping, she could never do it in a million years. This image is therefore conclusively proven to be a photo manipulation, created almost entirely by a computer, and with only minimal work done by Lois Ross herself. Lois Ross's claims that this is an original painting, and that she drew the base image in the way she describes, are false, so Dr. Lois Ross's picture, is, incontrovertibly, exposed as a photo manipulation. All that now remains for me is to briefly speculate on her motives for producing it. I do not believe that she intended to defraud anyone of money by trying to sell her photo manipulation as a real painting. I don't even believe that she has actually printed it, although I may be proved wrong on that. But it is clear from Dr. Lois Ross's comments, too, and about Gerald White, that she is very antagonistic toward him. She doesn't like him, for some reason. And from the still frame of him that she chose to use for her picture, it is clear that she was looking for an image that showed a particularly manic expression on his face. The edits she subsequently made to his eyes, making them particularly bright and piercing, further reveal that intention. So my view is that Dr. Lois Ross's actions were motivated by a desire to falsely depict Jarrah White as a somewhat crazed individual, in the hope that others might use her picture elsewhere, to reinforce that image of him, as indeed I know one of his opponents already has done. But that was not my main reason for making this video. My purpose is clearly spelled out in the caption that follows.